Hey everybody, I'm Mark 3 SMLE, and today we'll be testing the 10mm versus the 357 Magnum. Let's go ahead and go over what we're doing here, and we're going to go ahead and shoot some gel. When it comes to handgun power, the 357 Magnum and the 10mm Auto are tops. They are known for their stopping power out of small handguns like this. Traditionally speaking, the 357 first came out in 1935 as an answer to have a more powerful 38 special round that can go through automobile glass, automobile engine blocks, and have more stopping power against ballistic vests of the time that were worn by the gangsters. Now, speed that up to the 1980s and people wanted automatic pistols that were that powerful. There's a lot of debate whether the 10 millimeter round is actually as powerful, if not more powerful, as a 41 Magnum. I think that's a bit of an unfair comparison, so we're going to go with the good old friend of ours, the 357 Magnum. Now we can see the 357 Magnum is a fair bit longer than the 10 millimeter, but the 10 millimeter is a little bit bigger with a 40 caliber bullet. Now to make things fair, I went ahead and bought Hornady Custom 357 Magnum 158 grain XTPs and 10 millimeter. 155 grain XTPs to get as much of a fair comparison as we can. 1403. 1332. 1318. 1256. Wow. Alright, we have our 357 Magnum, 158 grain XTP. Traveling at just over 1,200 feet a second out of our Model 27 Smith & Wesson. Let's go ahead and take a shot. Four layers of denim. Just as I thought, went clear through. Let's get some more gel on that. Let's try the Glock 10 millimeter with our 155 grain XTP. Okay, we have a round. All right, this is 357 take two. I have a small air block, so we have a total of 30 inches of gel. I'm gonna favor to the low right corner so I can capture that projectile. All right, we got a capture, cool. All the rounds went clear through our four layers of denim. Here are our wound tracks. We have our 357 Magnum on the left, which traversed out, over penetrated the 16 inches of clear ballistics FBI block. Here's our 10 millimeter, and it stops right there. And our final 357 Magnum ended up right there. Let's do the post mortem. The overall penetration of the 10 millimeter was pretty impressive almost 16 inches. The 357 Madden went a little bit further, carried over to almost 22 inches. Actually, we're just at 22 inches. You can see our 10 millimeter has quite a lot of upset in the first four or five inches before straightening out and becoming more or less just a straight path until it finally comes to rest. The 357 Magnum is about the same grainage, but we're talking about a smaller caliber, so the bullet is a bit longer, so it's able to retain more upset and penetration, but of course it over penetrates out to 22 inches. But the actual upset in the wound tract is quite a bit more than the 10 millimeter. On the left is the 357 Magnum. It expanded out to 0.54 of an inch. The 10 millimeter though went out to 0 0.70 of an inch, fully expanded. So what can we gain from all that we did today? Well, the 357 Magnum is a powerful round, but it over penetrated even though it gave us a little more damage in our first 10 inches or so than the 10 millimeter did, whereas the 10 millimeter upset it very well because it's a faster round and it didn't over penetrate. So 
is, is the 3 to 7 Magnum a little bit better than the 10mm? Well, overpenetration might be a problem in some self-defense situations, but the 10mm itself, the 10mm is less available. I had to mail order that XTP round that you saw me fire. The 10mm pistols are also less available, whereas the 3 to 7 Magnums and the ammunition is better to find. But anyway, the 10mm, you have faster reloads, and you have more ammunition capacity. So which one is important to you? Well, that's entirely up to you. I'll see you guys next time.